Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel and welcome to using a MOSFET as a switch. In this video, we'll cover what is a MOSFET. We'll talk about using a MOSFET as a switch versus a mechanical switch. We'll of course talk about how to use the MOSFET as a switch and then we'll provide an example using an Arduino. Let's get started. So what is a MOSFET? Well, MOSFET is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, of course. So MOSFET is a I'll say new, but it's actually been around for a while, but a new type of transistor that's that's very common these days. And it's used for amplification or switching electronic signals. So we're going to talk about how to use it as a switch. So what are the benefits of using a MOSFET or any type of uh, solid state switch versus a mechanical switch? Well, first of all, they have a longer life. If you're using them within their ranges, they'll last longer than you will. Mechanical switch is going to have a finite life just because it's mechanical. It has moving parts. They're silent. You don't hear that, you know, for a relay, if anybody's had a big relay, they always hear that relay slapping. So they're quiet. Also, they have a very simple setup. And I don't want to speak for every mechanical switch out there, but a lot of the relays out there often require circuitry around them. They often require like a high, high voltage level. So in this example, and if you're doing switching with MOSFETs, you typically want to get an enhancement mode MOSFET. Enhancement mode MOSFETs are specially made for switching. And what they ensure is when the, I'll use switching terms, but when the switch is closed, when the MOSFET is allowing current to flow, they have a very low resistance. And so they're geared for switching applications. There's two main types of MOSFETs, N-channel and P-channel. So on the left, we have the end channel, and you can tell the difference by the arrow pointing at the gate or away from the gate. And the end channel, basically, the semiconductor material is doped with more electrons. So current flows, and once again, the gate controls the current, turns the MOSFET on or off, and current flows from the drain to the source. A P-channel is doped with holes, and current flows from the source to the drain. So let's look at more of how you would use a MOSFET as a switch and some of the important specs. So here I have a, a setup with an N-channel MOSFET. I have VDD at the top, which is just essentially my power source. That's my source of power. My, I'm showing a resistor symbol for the load. So this is what I'm trying to switch on or off or what I'm trying to apply power to. Uh, and then I have my MOSFET and then I have ground. Now with an N-channel MOSFET, we typically want to have the source connected to ground and the drain is going to be connected to the load and essentially the load is then connected to our power source and there's a reason we need to do that for an n-channel mosfet and that's to control an n-channel mosfet we want i should say to turn it on we want the gate to be more positive than the source so if we connected a dmm between our gate and the source we want that to be a positive voltage to turn it on and in most cases you know, you'll use a five volt level to turn it on. To turn it on, we would close the switch, apply the five volt, our switch closes, current flows from VDD through the load, through the MOSFET to ground. And if I want to turn it off, I'd apply zero volts to the gate. Now the gate essentially looks like an open. In actuality, some current flows from the gate to the source, but it's very little, less than one milliamp. So we can power the gate with, let's say, a digital pin from an Arduino. Now, I want to also talk about some other important specs or terminology when we're, we're dealing with a MOSFET. And I'm using an example MOSFET that I'll use in the example I'm going to show you, but the Buzz 11 or BUZ11 N-channel MOSFET. It's a popular model out there. And so let's look at some of its specs. Max voltage or VDS. So VDS you could imagine is the voltage between the drain and the source. If I put my DMM across my drain and my source, I can't have more than 50 volts or I risk, we'll say, damaging the MOSFET. Actually, that's why this diode is here. If you go higher than 50 volts, the diode will, will conduct. Max current, typically referred to as ID, so the current, the drain current, 30 amps for this one. So the, you can see this MOSFET can handle a good amount of power. Now, if you were going to throw 30 amps through this MOSFET, you typically would have some type of large heat sink on it because that's that's a lot of current through a small device. And I'll, I'll show a picture of it uh, later in the example. The on resistance, and that's RDS or the resistance from the drain to the source. 
for this one it's specced at 40 milliohms. And what that means is the MOSFET's not perfect. It's going to have some type of resistance. It's not going to be a perfect short. And we want that resistance to be as low as possible because we don't want to, you know, burn any power across the MOSFET. So 40 milliohms is the value for the MOSFET, and that's pretty low. And we can essentially, in most circuits, just pretend it's a short. And finally, the gate threshold voltage. And this is related to VGS, or, or the voltage from gate to source. And, and what this is saying is we need a potential between these two to turn it on or off. Or what I should say is our MOSFET will turn off or their switch will close when the voltage is below two volts. That's what the data sheet is guaranteeing. So even if it wasn't quite zero, let's say it was one volt, the MOSFET would still stop conducting. And then if our value is higher than four volts, so even if we couldn't get quite five, if we had 4.8 volts, let's say, our MOSFET will act like a, a short or a closed switch. So those are some important other important specs. Here's a picture of the Buzz 11, and you know this is typical for MOSFETs that have fairly high power handling. You know they come in a lot of different packages, and if if you don't need a lot of power, you can get a much smaller version. But you can see the three pins. It's sort of laying down on its back, upside down. But the three pins, the source drain and gate. Then notice you have what they call the flange, but that is actually a metal tab, and that's actually at the same potential the drain is. So it's connected to the drain. So when you're handling this, you have to be careful because that top part, you don't want to lean it, lean it against any metal because you'll get a short if you have any power on the drain. But basically what you would do is uh, if you want to run a lot of current through it, you would attach a uh, heat sink to that tab to dissipate the, the power or the heat, I should say. So for my example, I'm going to demonstrate it, and I'm going to use an Arduino. And I have one pin connected to a P channel, and that's the one closest to the Arduino. And then I have another pin connected to my N channel gate. Now remember, for the N channel, we typically want to have the source connected to ground because we want to bring the gate to a higher potential than ground. With the P channel, it's opposite. A zero volt on the P channel would turn the MOSFET on or close the switch. Because with the P-channel, we want the gate to be more negative than the source. And that doesn't mean we have a negative voltage. It just means the potential, if we put a DMM across the gate to the source, would be negative. So if we have the source at 5 volts and the gate at 0 volts, that's essentially a negative potential from the gate to the source, and current's going to flow. And then if we apply a high to the gate, it'll turn it off. And you can see in our example, we're going to use LEDs, so we're just going to turn the LED on or off. And the main difference here is where you can put your load, whether you want it closer to ground or closer to the power source. But also, a lot of people prefer N channels, and N channels are more common than P channels when we use them as switches, simply because if something were to go wrong in my circuit, I, it's easier to make sure that the gate goes to ground than it is to keep 5 volts there. So typically people like end channels because zero volts is off and five volts is on. Okay, here's the code for the example I'm about to show. So all I'm gonna do in this is take two digital pins, I create variables to represent my digital pins and which MOSFET's connected to it. The end MOS is the end channel, of course. I then, in my setup code, turn my digital pins to outputs. So I can either output a zero volts, which is ground, or five volts. Then in my loop, I'm just going to go back and forth, but notice that I use the same value. So I do a digital write to my NMOS and my PMOS, and I do them for both high. But this is going to have different effects because we know that they're different. So this high is going to turn my N channel MOSFET on or close the switch, and it's going to turn my P channel off or open the switch. I then delay for 750 milliseconds, then I do a low on each, and we're going to have the opposite. The end channel is going to open, the P channel is going to close and conduct. So here's a quick video of this setup. So we're going to watch a video inside of a video. I'm going to blow your mind. And you can see the Arduino. You can see on the left I have the end channel. On the right I have the P channel. And you can sort of tell that if you look at the setup because I have the, the power going to the top of the board and the ground going to the bottom. And we can see the LEDs above the end channel and it's below the P channel. So let's just do a quick video, and there's not much to show here. It's just going to toggle. So my N channel's on, my P channel's on. My N channel's on, my P channel's on. 
main channel's on, my P channel's on. So that's all in using a MOSFET as a switch. And we talked about how easy it is to use it. We talked about its advantages over a uh, mechanical switch. If anybody feels I left anything out or anything important to note, please leave it in the comments. If you want to get the, the simple Arduino code we went over, I'll have it on my blog. For more details on MOSFETs, if you want to know more, go to Wikipedia. They, they have a pretty thorough page on MOSFETs. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.